Christian. Hello, hello. Over here to your left. Where are you? How you doing? How you doing? I'm good. Yourself? Yeah, not bad. Good man. First UFC media day, first yes, UFC fight week. What's the feeling like so far as you uh, embark on these first steps as a UFC athlete? Yeah, great feeling so far. Um, the whole environment, good energy, um, very professional. Um, I've been through a lot of previous organizations, very high level as well, with the IMAFs, um, Cage Warriors. And I can say, yeah, it's another level up here and I'm enjoying it so far. And in terms of the grounding that you've had, you know, having that path through the amateurs, through IMF, into Cage Warriors. I think you were amateur at Cage Warriors first as well, weren't you? In yeah, there? yeah, originally, yeah. And then up through the pros as well. How valuable has that experience been, just gradually progressing and moving up, honing your skills, and now here you are on the UFC stage? Yeah, second to none. Of course, with the, starting off my amateurs with Cage Warriors, it was the highest level available in the UK at the time. And then I went on to the IMAS, which then took me on to the the world stage, again, the highest level at that time. Um, then we went to, again, to the professional ranks, Cage Warriors, and now the global here with UFC. So it's kind of followed the same trajectory um, with each, each position I've leveled up at. So um, yeah, I think things are working and uh, heading in the right direction. Did you expect to get that UFC opportunity so quickly after picking up the middleweight belt for Cage Warriors? Um, I, was, I was always thinking it was expected as the champions do go on to then become a UFC, a UFC athlete. But I wasn't expecting it kind of in that time frame because on, I'm only two years into my professional career. But I think it's more my experience through amateur that has led me to be able to pick up so much experience and now you know, produ produce the game that I have produced in my, in my fights recently. But um, yeah, that's what I would say, that's what I would say. The UK fans who've been following you, you know, working your way up through the, through the Cage Warriors mm -hmm. team will be very familiar with your style of fighting, but there's going to be a, a big audience of MMA fans out there who haven't seen much of Christian Leroy Duncan in the cage. <laughs> what can I expect to see when you walk out there on Saturday? What can I expect to see? Great question. Um, I don't even know how to answer that. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know myself what's going to happen in there. Um, I say very, very free flowing, very lucid, um, un unexpected. You're going to see a lot of, um, um, I say, unorthodox fighting stuff. Um, I just like to have fun in there. And then as we go on in the fight, things change and yeah, just have fun in there. Would you make your opponent, he likes to, he likes to stand and throw, he's heavy-handed. Yeah. Heavy yeah. um, does he play into your style, do you think? Um, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I believe so. Um, he's, a, he's a great fighter, obviously, he's at this level now. Well-experienced as well, six fights within the UFC. Three and three, I believe, his record is. But nonetheless, um, a, big, a big threat. Um, he's been at this level, he's experienced some top guys at this level as well. So I'm expecting a well-prepared well man and a great fighter. So... I look forward to that the most, the greatest test. No, you're a very sort of uh, calm, sort of composed character. I don't mm -hmm. know if you're a big prediction guy. Um, have you got any kind of prediction for us for fight night? Outcome-wise, no, but I can guarantee that it's going to be an explosive fight, start to finish, um, and definitely one to watch out for. So, man, appreciate it. Yes, sir. Christian down here, you touched on Disco's experience. Are you happy to be fighting somebody so experienced um, in the octagon in your debut? Yeah, definitely. I kind of was expecting it just because of how I explained earlier through amateurs, my early days with the IMF. I'm fighting world champions in other, di um, other countries, you know, the top, top guys in the world. So we're only, you know, we're only kind of matches that kind of caliber. So I expect, same with Cage Warriors, I'm fighting top guys from coming into Cage Warriors from other organizations. There's at the top, there's the champions here, um, undefeated records, 10 fight win streak. So it kind of follows that same trajectory, and I was expecting that coming into the UFC. Yeah. And it's always a surreal moment when you get the call or the email saying that you're in the UFC. Like, talk us through that moment when you found yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. So it was kind of um, it was kind of a funny way that we found out that was going to be on this card in London, because I was set to fight Jesse Taylor, um, who uh, most of you sure are familiar with, especially the long-term MMA fans. Um, very well known from the Ultimate Fighter. Um, I would say one of the most experienced. Um, fighters on the planet at this point, how long he's been around. So I was set to fight him on New Year's Eve, and we had the weigh-in on the Friday, all clear, all good to go. Saturday morning, we had a call from Graham, the owner of Cage Warriors, and he called us down to the office. Um, as soon as the door opened, I seen the doctor in the, in the boardroom. As soon as I seen that, I was shaking my head. I kind of expected some bad news here and there. Um, he took us into a separate room and explained that Jesse was involved in a freak accident. Um, he got hit by a car. 
that evening. So around 3 a.m. in the morning, I believe. We took him to the hospital, checked out all clear, but he'd done something to his shoulder where he wasn't able to fight. Um, and then he also said, at that moment, he said, every cloud has a silver lining, 99% you're going to be fighting on the card in London. So that's the way we find out. It's kind of a roller coaster of emotions, but it's worked out in a positive way. And what was your reaction to your friends and family? Say again? What was the reaction to your friends and family when you relayed the news to them? Yeah, yeah, they was, they was obviously annoyed. First of all, they was asking, is he okay? Which, yeah, I appreciate. And um, yeah, they was over the moon. Um, I didn't think they expected this moment to come, but not so soon. But yeah, a lot of support, friends, family, and support back home. A whole lot of support, man. Appreciate it, man. Yes, sir. In front right here. Uh, would you say Je preparing for Jesse Taylor was that he would be, was he more of a challenge preparing for it than Dusko, given the fact, like, as you said, Jesse Taylor, he fought in the Ultimate Fighter yeah. like 10 years ago. Way back, yeah. Um, it's, it's more of his experience and his game. He's had so long to refine his style of game. Um, it hasn't really changed over the years. He's been doing the same thing over and over and over and over. So he's very strong at that one thing. So I think. In that sense, Dusko is more all-rounded, so you're not just training for one area. So I would say in the area that he was good at, yeah, I would say that yeah, more of a challenge, but all around, I think Dusko would pose a bigger threat. Um, and last one for me. Uh, can I get your thoughts on the main event between Kamaro and Leon? How do you see that playing and out? Leon, oh, I'm looking forward to that one. Um, yeah, after the way the last one finished, yeah, I was watching that, I was, um, watching that one live, actually. Um, I, went, yeah, I was out of my seat when he got the head kick finish. Um, obviously, support on my guy from the UK. Um, I like Osman as a fighter. I'm a great fighter. Seems like a great guy too. But I'm obviously rooting for the home, the home guy in that one. Christian, right, sorry. Um, you seem like a very laid-back guy, but when fighters make their debut in the UFC, mm. a, a lot of them say that it feels different and mm. that you can feel the pressure. Are you doing anything in preparation for that to make this feel like just a regular fight, like psychologically speaking? Um, I would say it feels like home um, just because of the mindset that we've had from the beginning that we would get to this stage and this is the, the true, true beginning for us. So it kind of feels like now I'm home... Um, um, everything is fresh and new, so I'm taking it in my stride. But it's an experience that gives me not so much nerves, but excitement, I would say. More excitement. Thank you, mate. Best of luck, sir. Yes, appreciate it, sir. Just over here. Um, you spent some time at Tiger Muay Thai training for this fight. What was that preparation like there? Yeah, great out there. Number one, great food, <laughs> great weather, and great training. Um, I was out there for five weeks at the start of my camp, um, and I spent the last four weeks here home refining. But there was a lot of top-level guys out there. So I did go out there last year, and I kind of was just getting my feet. I didn't really know anybody out there. I didn't know the coaches. Um, so when I come back this time, I was a lot more familiar. So I fit into the routine a lot more. It's more specific for um, this fight coming up. Um, there was five other guys on this card. Um, it was Makayev, Lerone Murphy. Um, you had Rafael was on the, is there too, and also Roman Delitze, and then myself of course but yeah great experience out there the mats the mats were at very high level um and i'll say yeah we'll definitely play a big part in this fight and i saw you did some work with phil hawes as well did he give you any advice going into this weekend yeah actually i did ask him um he just said do your thing kind of like be yourself um but phil hawes is one of the strongest guys that i've ever trained with um great wrestler um and unexpectedly good on the feet as well but I did a lot of work with him, actually. We done like small group training sessions. He showed me a lot of different tips. Um, yeah, he's a great, he's a great fighter too. Hey, Christian, you mentioned you started your MMA career following uh, the end of your basketball career. So, how has your experience in basketball helped you in transitioning to MMA, if at all? Yeah, I would, I would say. Um, some key things would be the physicality, so the athleticism, um, footwork, and then but also the tactical side of the game, because the level I was playing at at the time was the highest in the country. So the sessions are very, like, very detailed and very like, um, high strategy. Um, so I would say I could apply that kind of thinking to MMA, but then with also the creativity that I used to play with, I could add that too. And I think all those together made a dangerous combination to and obviously brought me to this level here. 
you also mentioned um, figures like LeBron James and Kobe Bryant, mm -hmm. who were actually influential to, yeah, to you. Yeah. And how have they influ influenced your mindset and attitude uh, towards uh, learning MMA? I would say when I was younger and I first started playing basketball around 14, it was more their style. So the flash of Kobe and the dominance of LeBron. Um, I like the creativity again, the way they, Kobe with the fadeaway shots, the, foot, the footwork, and LeBron with just the overall dominance, you know, going into the paint, finishing on top of guys. But now I've kind of evolved and matured. It's more the mindset of the guys now as well. So Kobe's attention to training and the details and then LeBron's um, mindset towards like recovery and how important your body is. So it's kind of, as, as I've grown, I've kind of looked at other aspects of, of sports in general. And yeah, I say again, it's going to create something dangerous. Are there any MMA fighters you are looking up to? Um, yeah, when I started out, um, I never really knew much about mixed martial arts at all, or UFC. I heard of cage fighting, but I wasn't familiar. Um, my first day of training, I went home, and I was watching John Jones fights. And then I remember sitting down, and I was watching them, like how you, people would watch a series on Netflix back to back on watching his fights back and forth. And, that was, from there, that was my, my top, top fighter. Um, but I've grown to, to love different styles, different fighters. Um, Anderson Silva's up there too. Um, Bisping as well. Um, I'd also say Demetrius Johnson. Um, this is just to name a few off the top of my head. But I like to take styles, especially Khabib now as well, because he brought a whole new style to the game um, and changed the game, I would say, in a way, because now the rest is coming through. And, it's showing that how the sport is now evolving. You have to have other aspects of your game to catch up. So, yeah, enjoy these are the fires I have off the top of my head. Thank you. Best of luck. I appreciate it. Got one more quick one for you. Yeah, um, on. your, your coach and mentor, Mark, Mark Weir. Mark the Wizard Weir, yeah. In the back of the room there. <laughs> His first UFC appearance in, uh, was, was in London. Yeah. He got the job done very quickly. How can, how can you produce a similar moment? For UK MMA and for your team? We'll have to see what happens. <laughs> I don't think he was expecting that, but yeah, he, um, he had a great start to his UFC career. Um, put a lot of eyes on him and the UK, pioneer of the MMA in the UK alongside Ian Freeman and others. But I think with that one there, I have to say time will tell. We'll see what happens in the night.